Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from XVRAutomation.com and this is part 6 of our Android app automation with Robotium series. And in this part, we're going to write our first Android native application. And this is part 2 of this particular part. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 5 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. So writing our first Android native applications, we have already created the project for writing the Android native application, but we have not written anything yet. So let's flip to Eclipse. So this is the project which we created in our last part of this video series. And we also saw that there was an exception coming like this, like Java compile error because there is no Android support dot v7 internal dot widget dot action dot action bar overlay layout. It's mainly because we don't have the Android SDK version 22 since it is defaultly selected. So now if you change it to API level 19, which we already have in our project, if I select this, the error will be gone and you can see the activity. So this is the activity. So in Android, everything is called as activity. And if you select any one of the activity, the window of the application, you can see there is a properties. There are different kinds of properties available. It's more like your Visual Studio, Windows application development or web application development, you have different types of palettes, which is nothing but your tools. And you can see different kinds of palettes available like form widgets, text fields, layouts, composites, image and media, time and date, a lot of things. Whatever you can see in your application is all available right now at your disposal. You can make use of any one of these control and develop your Android applications. So as you can see, all the error has gone and now everything is all set. So the next thing we need to do is to just write the code. So the coding, we are going to write it right here in the source. So before starting to write the code in the source, we need to first create or design our calculator application to the one like this. As you already see in this particular article, we have already discussed about it. And this is our target application that we're going to create. So this design, we can do it in activity underscore main.xml file. So this is the code for that. So I'm not going to write the code each and every line. Rather, the easiest way for me is to just copy paste. So I'm just going to copy the code. So here, instead of doing and dragging and dropping, I can go to the activity underscore main.xml and I can straight away paste it right here and just save it and go to the graphical layout. You can see that the screen will be rendered and there are some errors and it says that the project uh, is unable to render because there are some problems like this, which means this string is not recognized. So this is actually coming from a place called as strings.xml file. So again, there is a string.xml file. This is the UI version of it. So what I'm going to do is just copy paste the code again. So this is the code that we require. So I'm just going to copy this code and I'm just going to paste it. So once I save this, the error will be gone, right? And the last part we need to do is to write the actual code in the main activity.java, right? So for that, this is my code. So let's import all these stuffs. So I'm going to copy paste the importing. So I'm just going to paste it. And oops. And then I'm going to copy this code fully till right here. And I'm going to directly paste it right here. And I'm going to save it. Hopefully there is no more errors. Great. Seems like no errors are there. The last thing we need to do is to just execute this code. That's it. So for executing this code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click this code. And if I run as Android application, it will automatically open the Android emulator for us and it will start executing the test case. But we have two emulator in our case. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the Android SDK. And then I'm going to manually open one of the virtual device. So I have opened the virtual device 
manager and then this is my test device so let's start this device and let's launch it so this will launch me a small emulator as you can see right now all right just opened the emulator so it will keep on loading the Android so this is a very time-consuming process even your machine is very fast this process of booting your Android from the emulator is pretty slow and I don't know what's the reason maybe Google has to tweak some more but not sure but it takes some time so we'll just wait patiently for this Android to completely boot up and then we will execute our application which we wrote just now so now the emulator is fully loaded and what we can do is we can see that the emulator has got all the actual functionality as Android applications right see you can see everything the widgets the apps everything which is running actual Android operating system is available right here right so now let's try to run our application we wrote just now so I'm just going to right click the calculator application and there is something called run as Android applications so if you just run this you can see there is a logs coming up in your logcat so there is something called logcat so just clear this thing and there is something called logcat so this logcat will actually run on behind the scenes for you to show that the Android operating system is running right so now if I try to run this application just right click run as Android application and in the console you can see that it is showing you up uploading the calculator installing the calculator.apk so right now it is installing the calculator application we wrote just now and hopefully it should also launch our application so success and as you can see it is starting the activity con.example.calculator.main activity hooray you can see the calculator application we just wrote now right uh, so let's perform a simple test so I'm going to just put 100 and I'm going to press uh, 20 and now if I add see automatically it becomes 120 and now if I subtract it is minus 80 and if I multiply it is 2000 great so our application is right now ready right so let's go to the code and have a little deeper look of what the code is actually doing so for that let's go to the activity underscore main dot XML file so how are these objects of the applications are being created and how these are named so if you go to the activity underscore main dot XML file you can see for each and every controls the text view so there is a name called txt number one so the txt number one is nothing but you are this one right Similarly, if you go to this one, edit number one, so this is our edit number one. So this is text number one, this is edit number one. Similarly, text number two is nothing but this one. This is text number two, and the edit number two is this one. So this is edit number one, this is edit number two, and you can also just hover or click it here, and you can see it is also showing you that. Similarly, this option button is called as RD add. Similarly, the subtract button is called as RD sub, and this is called as RD multiply. Right? And the results is actually coming from a TXT results. Right? And also, you can see the app status is nothing but. A okay, let's see what it is. So, if I come down a little bit. You can see it's a text view of chr text so it's a chronometer with this text right great so this is how we have created so how are we calling this 
just go to the main activity dot Java and you can see that on create we are just creating all these controls we are just trying to set all the IDs for each and every control in the text box right and here you can see that each and every controls are found using find value by ID and there we are passing r dot ID dot edit number two so what is this r dot ID dot edit number two so what is this r is actually basically this r is coming from your generated code and you can see here there is a r dot java so here you can see each and every controls address are specified here for edit number one this is the address in the memory similarly this is the address in the memory similarly this is the address for this control so this is something which only android can understand but for a layman for a user for a developer who can easily write this code they don't have to use this complex values here rather they can directly use these properties so actually this is nothing but a property of a class id which is again coming from your static class final class r right so this is a static class id and this is a final class R. So to access this particular property, we're using R dot ID dot this property. So if you identify that, you can perform the operation in that particular control. So this address will in turn take you back to the XML file of the activity underscore main dot XML file to identify the control in the activity which you have. So this is how the whole object identification of a control within the application is happening so everything is activity and every activity has each and every controls and these controls are identified using this r.java class and this r.java final class will be in turn called in our main activity.java class using these controls like this so to identify each and every control we are using this way r.id. edit number two etc Right, so once it is done, then we are performing the add method operation, which is very simple. Similarly, we are also performing subtraction and addition. Based upon the value which we are passing, we are just trying to perform this value using its handlers. So here, everything is called as listeners. So add the value listener is there. And also within the add the value listener, we perform the operation right here. Right, so. That's it guys, you have written a simple Android application using Android SDK. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.